Recently, I have been posting a lot of my charcoal drawings on Instagram and on YouTube, and I'm getting a lot of questions about what materials I use, or what I use for blending, what charcoal I use, and what paper I use. So I thought I would take this video to just go through some of the equipment, and just talk you through a little bit about how I use each piece of equipment to hopefully help you with your charcoal drawings. So let's start off with the easy stuff. Let's start off with the charcoal that I use. The first is this Willow charcoal. This is one of them. Vine or Willow charcoal works perfectly well. And I use this for sort of the mid-tones because Vine charcoal, when you put it down, it doesn't go completely black. It goes a sort of mid-grey and it's really easy to erase. So I don't have any particular brand that I like to use, but this particular one is just coats. Next is probably my most important tool, and it's these Conte charcoal pencils. I use two. I use an HB pencil, and I use a 2B pencil. The HB is sort of for my initial drawing and laying out the sketch, and then the 2B pencil is for darkening it up and putting those like true dark values in and just refining the drawing a little bit more. I've tried loads of different brands of pastel pencils. I've tried the Stabilo Carbothella, I've tried Derwent, I've tried Pit Pastel, I've tried the Conte Pastel pencils, I've tried loads of different charcoal pencils as well, and by far the Conte ones are the ones that I found work the best for my style of drawing. I'm also asked how I get my charcoal drawings so black. This was something that I used to struggle with quite a lot and everything always just looked like kind of like a grey colour and to get it really black I would have to go in with my charcoal pencil and really really scrub in and make sure I was getting everything completely covered. But I found a much better solution and that is this Creticolor charcoal stick. You can see how I've started to wear mine down. It's a compressed charcoal stick which means it contains a little bit of a binder and I think it's that binder along with the way that it's made that makes it much darker. But I have found this particular brand, this Creticolor, produce a really deep black and you can actually erase pretty much all of it almost back to white. So. I found it really useful in my large scale drawings, especially in areas where I want dark and then lights over the top, such as when I'm adding in the whiskers. This is the thing with charcoal, when you start playing around with it, you start getting messy fingers, and that messiness and that malleability is one of the things that I love about it, but it's also one of the worst things about it because you just get covered in charcoal. All the types of charcoal that I use is charcoal powder. Charcoal powder is probably one of the main types of charcoal that I use for my drawings. Because they're quite big, the charcoal powder allows me to cover large spaces very quickly. And I'll just use a tissue or a sort of charcoal pouch. I don't have a charcoal pouch with me, but what I do have is this makeup blender. And I'll just dip the makeup blender into the charcoal pot and start spreading it over the surface of the paper, spreading that charcoal around. I use two types of charcoal powder. This one is just Creticolor's own charcoal powder. The actual brand itself of this charcoal powder doesn't matter. Pre-bought charcoal powder tends to be made out of the vine charcoal. It tends to be made out of this stuff. So it doesn't really get very black. The charcoal that goes down is quite grey, and you don't have the widest value range with it. So what I like to do instead is create my own charcoal powder. So that's what this pot is here. And I have much less of this because I have to make it. And this charcoal powder is made out of these compressed charcoal sticks. So this charcoal powder has the ability to go much darker and it has a much wider range of values that I can use it for. So this is my go-to if I want more of a darker area, whereas the bigger charcoal powder, this charcoal powder, pre-bought charcoal powder, 
is for the areas that maybe I want a lighter grey going down that I will eventually pull the highlights out of. Moving back to this, this is just a makeup blender. I've only really just started using this in probably the last four or five drawings that I have done and it is brilliant for creating very smooth textures and very sort of light to mid-tone grey colours. It's not great for going super dark with things, but this would be perfect for putting in things like a base layer of skin. And the thing that I use it for is in my shadows, once I've used an eraser to pull out some of the details, I will actually go back over the top of those details with this blending tool to just sort of soften the details and darken them a little bit so they're not pure white. Because you don't want your highlights and your shadows to be the same value. You want a definite difference between them. And this just allows me to create that difference really simply and really smoothly. Keeping on the trend of makeup, here is a makeup brush. Any brush will do, but I just really like how sort of stiff but soft these bristles are. You can really scrub into the surface of the paper and really get that charcoal powder stuck into the grain of the paper. This is just a Brushworks one and I don't know where it's from because I got given this by Amber. I, well, I say got given, I stole it from Amber's makeup supplies. Shh, don't tell her. I use this for applying charcoal and also blending charcoal that I've already put down because a lot of working with charcoal is applying your charcoal onto the surface of the paper with the stick or with the powder or with the pencil. And then it's using various tools like the brushes, like the blending tools to move and maneuver that charcoal around the canvas or around the paper. It's not really like drawing with graphite. It's much more fluid and more closely related to painting because of how fluid that charcoal is and how much you can push and pull it across the surface. Speaking of blending, I also have a blending stump and a lot of people when they do graphite drawings they will actually use this blending stump for, well, blending. But I don't actually use it for that. What I use my blending stump for is for drawing. It's for applying the charcoal to the surface. So I will take my charcoal powder. I will then dip my blending stump or tortillion, as I think their fancy name for them is. Dip it into the charcoal powder, give it a tap to knock off any excess. And then I will use it to draw onto the surface of my paper. This is really good for sort of like mid-tone hairs. Hairs that you don't want to be completely black. So darker hairs that would be present in the highlighted regions of the subject that you're trying to do. So by using it almost in a tapping motion, you might be able to see this on the surface of the wood that I'm using, you can create these really nice sort of hairs or strands of fur that aren't super dark, which means they're not going to be in the shadows, but they're light enough that they can be part of the highlights. Then, talking about highlights, this is where my putty eraser comes in. I use a putty eraser to pull away the different hairs and different strands of fur or the different speckles on the nose or the details in the eye. And I like to use these putty erasers because they are so malleable. You can get really fine points. You can also get quite thick points. And as they get covered in charcoal, you can actually start to erase different amounts of that charcoal from the surface. So you can use it not only to return back to the pure white of the paper, but you can also use it to add in some slightly darker shadows by not completely erasing all of the charcoal on that surface. I don't know what brand this is. I don't really have a preference. And actually, I've just ordered four new putty erasers from four different brands. 
and I'm actually going to test them out and put another video together and let you know which one is my favourite. So far, I've had no issues by just getting a cheap putty eraser and using this. I think what can only be described as a game changer for me was the discovery of these. These are Tombow Mono Erasers. So I've got two of the round 2.3 millimeter ones, and then I've got one square one. These are empty now because I've used them and I've used them so much, but oh my God, these are some of the best small erasers that I have ever seen, and they are absolutely perfect for charcoal work. They're probably great for graphite as well, but I don't really use graphite anymore. They are perfect for details like whiskers, fine hairs, pores on skin, wrinkles. They are absolutely brilliant. And because the eraser is actually so stiff, you can actually press quite firmly and erase quite a lot of the charcoal. I don't actually like using these in my work. If you don't know what it is, it is a sculpting tool. And I use this to indent the surface of the paper. There's a lot of people out there who will use this for all of their picture. They will indent all of their fur and it, it looks really good on pictures, on screens. It looks amazing. Like all that detailed fur is, is perfect. But I don't like indenting the surface of the paper and compressing it. I just think it can affect how the light bounces off it and it, it just sort of, I don't know, I, I'm not a fan of it, but it's my opinion. If you guys do this, it's perfectly okay to do it. Don't let me put you off doing it if it's what you're used to, but I don't really like doing it personally. But in saying that, I do use this for the whiskers because I have yet to find a better alternative. So what I will do with this is indent the surface of the paper around the whiskers. Then once it's indented, I will take my large charcoal and I will start to push this over the surface of the paper. What will happen is the paper will take up that charcoal, but the areas that I have indented with the indenting tool will stay white. I will then blend that charcoal with my blending stump and some of those indentations will fill with the charcoal. Then I'll use my Tombow erasers to come in and remove that excess charcoal from those areas that I have indented. It's so far the best way that I have found and the most efficient way that I have found to create whiskers on top of a darker background. It's dead easy with paint because you just use white paint. I don't like using white pastel or white paint on my charcoal drawings because I think it gives everything a little bit of a, a blue tinge. So I like to keep all the whites, just the paper that doesn't have any charcoal on it. And aside from physically going in and using a charcoal pencil and drawing round each one of those whiskers, this method using the indenting tool applying your charcoal with a big charcoal stick and then erasing over those indentations is the best way to get those pure white whiskers in an efficient way, in a non-time consuming way. I think because I'm using it so sparingly, I can justify using this indentation tool. But again, I'm only justifying it to myself. If you're using this tool, that is perfectly okay. My work and your work is completely different. You just go and do you. And then the final tool in my arsenal, I, I think the other one was the final tool, but this is the real final tool, is this, this Derwent eraser. I've not tried any other electric erasers, but this one works really well for me. If you guys have tried this out and you've tried other electric erasers and you've found one that works better, please do let me know in the comments because I would love to try it out. But the way this Derwent eraser works is it's got a little motor inside and you just press this little button 
and the eraser spins round. Nothing I have found so far can return the paper to white when it's covered in charcoal as well as this thing. This thing can just pretty much, even if I've used this darkest dark charcoal, I can use this electric eraser and it will bring that paper pretty much back to its original white. As long as you're careful with it and you use it quite precisely, it is a fantastic tool. And if you do work in charcoal, I do highly recommend getting yourself one of these Derwent erasers and a couple of these Tombow mono erasers. They are absolutely fantastic. And then finally, one of the biggest questions I'm asked all the time is what paper do I use? And this is it. It's a huge roll of Fabriano Artistico 300 GSM hot pressed paper. I order this from Jackson's Art Supplies. Yeah, it's massive. It's a 10 meter by 1.4 meter roll. And for the work and the set of commissions that I'm doing at the minute, I will actually get through two and a half of these rolls of paper. It's not cheap stuff. It is some of the best paper that I have found to work on, especially with charcoal. It's so smooth, there's not really that much of a grain to it, especially when you're working on the large scale that I work on. But you can also get this in smaller pads, and I will put a link to those smaller pads in the description below if you'd like to try out this paper. And then, once I've completed one of my drawings, the final step is to seal it, and for that I use this Windsor & Newton fixative. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful, and some of these tools are either new or they're tools that you use as well. And I hope if you've got any other ideas of different tools that you use in your work, that you'll please let me know in the comments, because I'm always looking to try out new things. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see these charcoal tools in action, then why not check out this drawing of a leopard that I did a few weeks ago. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.